Hello everyone. Today I'm going to talk about fast sampling and counting case solutions in the local lemma regime. This is a joint work with Heng Guo, Yi Tongyun, and Chi Hao Zhang. Our work centers on CNF formula phi, which is a conjunction of one or more clauses. We use V to denote the set of Boolean variables and V to denote the set of clauses. A set solution is an assignment of variables in V such that all the clauses are satisfied. Then V is true. There are two fundamental computational tasks for seeing a formula, decision and counting. Decision is to determine whether set solution exists. Counting is to estimate the number of solutions. Both problems are fundamental in computer science one being empty complete, the other being Sharpie complete. We focus on a specific class of CNF formulas. Each class contains k variables, and each variable appears in at most d clauses. d is the maximum degree of CNF formula. Such formulas are called kd CNF formulas. In this example, each clause contains three variables, and each variable appears in at most two clauses. For instance, x2 appears twice, as not x2 in the first clause and x2 in the second clause. By Lova's local lemma, if k is roughly greater than log d, a set solution must exist. LD and Lovas proved that if each variable takes either true or false uniformly and independently, then with a positive probability, all the clauses are satisfied, which implies the case that solution must exist. Later on, Morse and Taldish came up with a famous algorithm that constructs a specific case that solution in linear time under the same condition. Our work focuses on sampling and counting problems. The input contains a CNF formula phi and an error bound epsilon. When sampling, the algorithm needs to draw a random solution that is almost uniformly distributed over all set solutions. Specifically, let mu denote the uniform distribution of all k set solutions. The distribution of output x should be very close to mu. Their total variation distance is bounded by epsilon. The counting problem requires to estimate the number of solutions v. The algorithm outputs v hat, which is an epsilon approximation to v. The sampling and the counting problems are closely related. If we can perform almost a uniform sampling, then by some reductions, we can do approximate counting. So in the rest of this talk, we will focus mainly on the sampling problem. In previous works, Herm et al. proved that if k is greater than 2 log d, then for monotone thing f, the Markov chain Monte Carlo method draws samples in n log n time. Monotone thin Fs are a special class of thin F formula, which requires all variables to appear positively in every clause. Wu et al. came up with a partial rejection sampling algorithm that samples thin F solutions in linear time. However, it still has an extra requirement. Each pair of clauses either does not share any variables or share at least S variables. Moitra gives a new algorithm based on linear programming. The algorithm is quite different from traditional sampling techniques. The running time is n to the poly dk, so it requires constant d and constant k. But the covite all proved a lower bound result. If k is less than 2 log d, the sampling problem is np hard. So there is a very important open problem. For general thin F formula, would there be a sampling algorithm that achieves the following? Push the threshold down to k greater than 2 log d. If so, 
the upper bound will match the current lower bound and achieve poly decay times of 2 to the n running time. Then it will always be polynomial and the dependency to n is almost linear. In our work, we partially answer this open problem by giving a new algorithm based on MCMC approach. Our algorithm works for general thing and formulas. We require k to be roughly greater than 20 log d. This makes our algorithm very fast. The exponent of m would be very close to 1. More formally, for any sufficiently small parameters zeta, if k is greater than 20 log d plus 20 log k plus 3 log 1 over zeta, then we have a sampling algorithm in time of tilde d squared k cubed n to the 1 plus zeta, and we also have a counting algorithm in time of tilde d cubed k cubed n to the 2 plus zeta. In our theorem, as zeta becomes smaller, the gap between k and 20 log d plus 20 log k becomes larger. The condition becomes slacker and our algorithm becomes faster. Our main contribution is the sampling algorithm, while the counting algorithm is obtained by simulated anemia. So let's have a look at the new sampling algorithm. Before describing our algorithm, let me explain why the classical MCMC approach fails in solving CNF problems. The most well-known MCMC algorithm is global dynamics, which is also known as Gibbs sampling. The algorithm starts from an arbitrary solution, then randomly updates this solution in t steps. In each step, we pick a variable uniformly at random. Then we resample this variable, conditioning on the assignment of other variables. In this example, we pick x5. Since all the clauses incident to x5 are already satisfied, we update x5 to true or false uniformly at random. However, if we pick x2, then to satisfy the first clause, we can only set x2 to false. In this situation, we choose a variable, but we cannot change its value. This issue will cause a big problem in sampling CNF solutions because in some steps, we cannot change the value of the chosen variable. Actually, in the worst case, we even cannot change the value of any chosen variables. So there is a possibility that we cannot update the initial solution to a desirable one using this method. In fact, global dynamics is a random work on solution space. Each time, we use the local update method to modify the current solution. Such local Markov chains are one of the most fundamental approaches for sampling and have successfully solved many problems. The crucial point of this approach is how well the solution space is connected. If the solution space is well connected, the chain converges rapidly. If the solution space is not well connected, the chain converges slowly. But for CNF problems, the solution space can be disconnected. Starting from some initial solution, it is impossible to reach solutions in other components. So the chain cannot converge to the uniform distribution over all set solution. This connectivity barrier makes the Markov chain approach useless in CNF problem. Previously, MCMC approach only works on the monotone case because of the connectivity barrier. Other works came up with some non-MCMC approaches. However, they only work for restricted classes of signal formulas. The partial rejection sampling requires a lower bound of intersection, and the linear programming works only for constant d and constant k. An open problem is that can MCMC approach bypass the connectivity barrier? We answer this open problem by giving a new technique. 
our technique is projection. We project from a high dimension to a lower one to improve the connectivity. In this picture, three red objects are disconnected in the three-dimensional world. But after the projection, their shadows are connected in the two-dimensional world. Now let's have a look at our algorithm. Our algorithm first constructs a good subset of variables n. Then we use GARB dynamics to sample the assignment of m from the distribution mu m. Here mu m is the marginal distribution on m projected from the uniform distribution mu. The GARB dynamics for mu m is naturally defined. We initialize each variable in M uniformly at random. In each step, we randomly pick a variable V in M and update the value of V conditioning on the assignment of other variables. After performing global dynamics, we obtain a random assignment X of variables in M. Then we sample the assignment of variables in the complement of M conditioning on x. The key point is that we use global dynamics on a projected distribution mu m rather than the original uniform distribution mu. So we need to prove that there exists an efficiently constructible subset m such that the global dynamics on projected distribution mu m is rapidly mixing and the global dynamics can be implemented efficiently. The implementation is not trivial because in every step, we need to resample XV from the conditional distribution. Such a condition only fixes the values of variable in N. So computing this conditional distribution involves a non-trivial counting problem. In general, it could be sharply hard. And in the last step, Given the partial assignment on M, we also need an efficient way to sample the assignments of other variables. Actually, the second and the third points are the same because both of them can reduce to join from the conditional distribution. So we have three tasks. First, we need to construct a good subset M. Second, we need to show that the global dynamics on projected distribution mu m is rapidly mixing. Finally, we need an efficient way to sample from the conditional distributions. We emphasize that the global dynamics is on set m and the conditional distribution is conditioned on the assignment of m. The first step is to construct a set m. We call m the set of marked variables. Each clause is required to contain at least alpha k marked variables and at least beta k unmarked variables. Such a marking procedure was introduced by Moitra, but he used it for a different purpose. The existence of M is guaranteed by Lova's local lemma, and we can use Morse and Chaldi algorithm to construct M. Next. We show that the global dynamics on projected distribution is rapidly mixing. For each step of the global dynamics, we randomly pick a marked variable v and resample the value of v conditioning on the assignment of other marked variables. Local uniformity is the key property in which the conditional distribution is very close to the uniform distribution over true and false. This is proved by Lovas local lemma as each clause contains at least beta k unmarked variables and these variables are unassigned in the conditional distribution. So after the update, the variable v takes true and false both with positive probability which immediately implies the Michael chain is connected. Moreover, we show that after all n log n steps of global dynamics, the distribution of output assignment is very close to mu m. The mixing time is proved by well-known path coupling technique. 
we use the disagreement coupling introduced by moisture to bond the discrepancy of past coupling. The local uniformity property once again plays an important role in analyzing these couplings. Finally, we need to implement our algorithm. In each transition of global dynamics, we need to resample variable V conditioning on the assignment of other marked variables. And in the last step of the algorithm, we sample the assignment of all marked variables conditioning on the marked ones. Computing the exact conditional distributions can be sharply hard, but with high probability, we can still draw approximate samples from these distributions. Consider the transition of global dynamics. We resample V conditioning on the assignment of other marked variables xm set minus v. Given the assignment xm set minus v, some clauses may already be satisfied. In this example, if x1 takes the value 2 or x4 takes the value false, this clause must be satisfied. Satisfied clauses have no effect on conditional distribution, so we can remove them. The key property is that after removing the clauses with high probability, the graph is deconstructed into small components of size O D K log n. This is due to the fact that each clause contains at least alpha k marked variables, and each marked variable takes an almost uniform value. So with high probability, each clause is satisfied and removed, resulting with small components. Then we find the connected component C that contains the variable V. To sample from the conditional distribution, we only need to process the component C. If we use the brute force algorithm, since the size of C is ODK log M, the running time will be n to the poly dk, which is too slow. Instead, we use rejection sampling on C. The variable v and other unmarked variables in C takes either true or false uniformly and independently. By Lovas' local lemma, all the clauses in C are satisfied, namely, the rejection sampling succeeds with the minimum probability of epsilon over n to the zeta. Here, zeta describes the gap between k and 20 log d plus 20 log k. We try the rejection sampling for O tilde n over epsilon to the zeta times. Then with high probability, one of them will succeed, and we successfully draw samples from the conditional distribution. Compared with the brute force algorithm, the rejection sampling is much faster when k and d are large. Therefore, each transition of global dynamics can be implemented using rejection sampling, and in the final step of the algorithm, we can also use a similar method to sample the assignment of unmarked variables. Combining the previous steps, we obtain the following algorithm. First, run more than a Tavdish algorithm to construct a set of marked variables n. Second, run global dynamics to sample the assignment of marked variables. Each transition is implemented using rejection sampling. Third, run rejection sampling again to sample the assignment of unmarked variables. Finally, put marked and unmarked variables together to get the final output. To prove the correctness of the algorithm, note that the construction of the marked set, the mixing of global dynamics, and the rejection sampling implementation are individually contributes a maximum error of epsilon over three. So the total error is at most epsilon. Thus the total variation distance between output distribution and the uniform distribution mu is at most epsilon. To prove the running time, note that the running time is dominated by simulating global dynamics for all n log n steps. In each transition step, 
we use the rejection sampling for O tilde n to the zeta times. So the final running time is O tilde n to the one plus zeta. Once we get to the sampling algorithm, the counting algorithm can be obtained by the simulated annealing reduction. Again, by Lovas local lemma, we can use a simple and fast non-adaptive simulated annealing reduction. So we obtain a counting algorithm with the running time O tilde n to the two plus zeta. In conclusion, in this work, we give fast algorithms for sampling and counting thin up solutions. We use the projection and the lowest local lemma to bypass the connectivity barrier of MCMC approach. There are some interesting open problems. For example, push the threshold down to k greater than 2 log d. If so, we can obtain the optimal regime for sampling and counting thin up solutions and extend our techniques to more general distributions, such as the hypergraph coloring. That's all. Thank you for your listening.